Hi, this is Kevin Reeves, and welcome to Sterling Sound. We're going to talk about HD tracks and the Velvet Underground today. Uh, I started my audio career way back in the 1980s. I'm dating myself now, but it was at Capitol Studios in Hollywood, California. I came to the East Coast and joined Polygram in 1997, which was uh, very soon bought out by Universal Music Group, became Universal Mastering. We grew that business and moved to New York City, and I was there up until 2011. And since that time in 2011, I've been here at Sterling Sound for the last couple of years. And I have been working on the HD Tracks catalog uh, project since 2007, when we started doing some of the classic Verve catalog reissues. Uh, and now we're doing all kinds of cool new stuff. Just this year alone, we've done projects for Rod Stewart, for Traffic, many of the uh, Stevie Wonder classic albums, and of course, The Velvet Underground, which is what we're talking about today. It's very important, especially right now, because we're starting to see the shift, the paradigm shift from the era of convenience, which isn't a bad thing, it's not a judgment, but the era of convenience now to where the technology is catching up, the bandwidth is increasing, the, uh, the capacity of the small handheld devices is growing exponentially, and of course the size is going down. So we're now going to be able to start offering high resolution audio to people for the very first time. They're going to hear these albums for the first time in high res, especially the stuff that we're doing now. So I think it's a very exciting time to be doing this type of work. And uh, I'm really excited about what's coming down the pipe for people. And it, it's a good thing, in my opinion. People have a very deep-seated emotional connection with these records. And you can't go in and change them because uh, they'll go nuts. And I'm not talking just about the audiophiles. I mean, the audiophiles are really sticklers on this stuff. But people in general who appreciate high-quality recordings they know this stuff and they know how it's supposed to sound. So I think that my job has been, especially in this new high res era, to sort of step back and let the tapes talk for themselves. It's all in the tapes, it's there. And uh, I, you know, it's not really my work, it's the people be now being able to appreciate this stuff in high resolution for the first time. And I think it's an exciting time for them. I can tell you it's an exciting time for me, being able to listen to this stuff and, and remaster it. So. Uh, I think that it's great, and I think it's just going to get better as the technology continues to, uh, to improve. Uh, the Velvet Underground sessions were awesome. I know that sounds sort of tweaky, but it, they, it was a great eye-opening experience for me. I have seen these tapes several times in my years with Polygram and Universal, uh, but I don't think I ever had a real appreciation for what they were. Uh, the sessions were produced by legendary legacy producer Bill Levinson, who is just a, uh, a fountain of knowledge on so many levels. But he knows this catalog like the back of his hand. And he knows all the stories that were told at the time, and he knows about all the backstories. So having him here, it was imperative you know, for the success of this. I could, of course, you know, transfer the tapes and make them sound good where necessary but Bill brought that level of knowledge I mean he talked about the fact that you know people will say that these recordings are uh, unique in their sound and they are but there's reasons for that and of course you know in 1967 the content of what they were talking about the lyrics the way they recorded it was very experimental and somewhat controversial at the time so bringing it out now in high res is just going to be an incredible experience for everybody and having Bill here to sort of you know, fill in all the gaps that I didn't know made the sessions incredible, at least for me as a fan. The condition of the tapes were excellent. I mean, considering that these tapes have been around almost as long as I've been alive, uh, for me, was an eye-opener. Uh, they've been very well handled and very well taken care of. They needed very little uh, preparation and restoration before I played them back. Uh, so they were all good. We had the uh, the advent also of, for the box set that was released commercially, a lot of unreleased stuff that uh, had never been heard before and touched since you know forever. Uh, Bill found a lot of that stuff in his many travels across the globe. So the tapes that we use for the HD tracks 
version of the Velvet Underground album and as well as the Chelsea Girls album. They were in great shape and they played back well and they sounded incredible. What tape recorder and what was the chain? Yes, that's the million dollar question. Well, I'm sort of uh, a stickler on this, so it's just my opinion, but there's one tape machine for me, and that's the Studer A820. Uh, I know in my years of being an engineer, there's lots of uh, argument back and forth about the sound of an ATR or the playback apparatus on this other machine. You know, to me, all of those things are irrelevant if the tape machine crunches your master tape while you're trying to rewind it or if a splice pops while you're winding the tape. The Studer Transport is by far the best that I've ever experienced in my travels. And so when I'm putting on a precious piece of American musical art on these machines to play it back, you know, I want to be sure that it's going to be okay. So I always use the Studer A20 as my tape machine and that's where all the magic really happens. Uh, the digital audio conversion happens when it hits the DCS 924. I convert everything at 192, uh, 192K, 192 kilohertz, 24 bit for HD tracks. Um, but the, the real magic is not in the vintage gear that I have in my rack or the great Sontec EQ that you see here. It's really in the alignment of the tape machine and the preparation of the master tape. Getting the tape machine aligned. Uh, not just to the test tones saying zero, but the fine adjustments that you make to the machine after that is what really makes the stuff sing. And that's where all of my magic happens. If I have a sound, that's how I get it. And uh, I use very minimal stuff after it leaves the tape machine. If the tape needs something, I'll go ahead and, and use an EQ if I have to. But again, it's very minimal because uh, these tapes usually sound great. And I think that's what the, the consumer, especially the HD tracks consumer, they want to hear that purity. So that's how we do it here, and at least that's how I work on it. Well, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the sound of this record is, uh, is unique. Um, if you're going to be critical, you know, you could say, well, it wasn't recorded well, it wasn't performed well. And if you go back in history, you know, the album was pretty much panned when it came out. And, uh, historically, no one seemed to give it very much credit. And now we look back upon this record as one of the most influential rock records ever done, which is an interesting thought. Um, the raw sound and the experimental way it was recorded is on those masters. And, you know, I didn't do hardly anything to it to capture that and I think that's really my job you know I could have ruined it by saying well let's take out all of that distortion on that violin or let's take out the pops and the, and the clicks that we hear uh, when someone's changing a guitar pickup you know those are all part of this historic piece of art so we don't do any of that stuff especially with HD track stuff but in general we you know we let the history speak for itself if there's an actual problem an electronic problem in the conversion somewhere which is very rare we can address those if necessary, but the raw sound on this album is on those masters and it's now being heard for the first time in, in high resolution. Nothing special. Uh, again, making sure that the tape is prepared correctly, that the machine is aligned and optimized for the best playback, and making sure that the, uh, the channel and the pathway to the conversion is clear. Nothing special that I did on this that I don't do on anything else. So there's no tricks and no secrets, I promise. I think that there's a lot of great stuff coming down, none of which I can talk about until it comes. And I'm sorry, it's a bit of a spoiler. However, we've only started to scratch the surface now. The HD Tracks at one point was considered this label that was putting out a lot of jazz and classical. You know, HD Tracks now is going to blow the lid off of things with stuff like the Stevie Wonder catalog we just did and some of the new projects coming down. Even though I can't name them by name, I can tell you that you're going to love them and I'm very excited to be a part of them and I'm looking forward to many years of doing this stuff because there are tons of stuff, tons of projects in the vaults that we haven't touched yet and I can't wait to get them going for HD Tracks.